Welcome to the Googleplex. This is an incredible place with lots of great stuff being worked on every single day. Before I worked here, I always wondered what it would be like to come to the Googleplex, meet up with a Googler, and have coffee with them, and just chat about what they do, how they do it, and why they do it. And today we're going to do exactly that. Welcome to Coffee with a Googler. I'm Lawrence Moroni, and today I'm really honored to speak with Timothy Jordan. And Timothy works with ubiquitous computing here at Google, and it's, it's a really interesting turn of phrase, ubiquitous computing. Could you tell us, really, <laughs> what does that mean? What's it all about? So uh, it's, it's more complex sounding than it actually <laughs> is, right? Ubiquitous okay. computing is, is, is kind of the combination of wearables and living room and auto, and Internet of Things. Okay. However, I like the term ubiquitous computing because we're trying to uh, help developers be successful not just on individual platforms, but okay. across all platforms. That is to say maybe um, implement a wearable strategy with their app, but okay. also have it available on the phone so that the user can use their app wherever it makes sense for them. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the term ubiquitous seems to suggest that it's like the computing platform spreading to whole new interesting areas beyond the phone, beyond the watch, and maybe glass. What kind of things are you seeing compute happening? Are you seeing compute happen? The different form factors. Mm -hmm. You mentioned watch, uh, TV, mm -hmm. uh, Google Cast, Android TV. Um, there's also Android Auto, um, and we just recently released Beacons, which we should talk about. At least Beacons, which we should talk about. And uh, you know, Internet of Things more generally is just on the other um, okay. side of the horizon. And this is Brillo and Weave, which we talked about at Google I.O., which right. enables embedded devices and all kinds of things. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to my fridge being able to compute. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me when the milk goes sour. Yeah. You know, that kind of, you know kind I mean, of that's cool. those kinds of examples have been uh, the conversation that the industry has used to drive forward, like general thought and like mm -hmm. protocols and interoperability. Um, though uh, there are sort of more practical needs that users have today. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's simple stuff like I want to be able to go running without taking my phone. Yeah. And I'd like to have yes. uh, that run tracked and I'd like to be able to listen to music. Yep. And you can do that today with Android Wear, right? So there, and, and that's something that like you ask a user and like, yes, absolutely, I want that. And those are the things that we should first address. Cool. The, the milk thing, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's hit or miss whether people like, you know, actually care about getting additional information around it. I, I've just changed the black coffee because my milk keeps going off. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, you mentioned beacons. I, I keep going to bacon because of the fridge, but you, yeah. you, you mentioned beacons earlier. And it's mm -hmm. like, what, what's, what's the thing with beacons? I mean, what's what makes it so interesting and It's special? a really good question, right? Because we've been talking about beacons as an industry for years. Mm -hmm. and uh, it's a simple idea of there's a thing that has information associated with it. Um, however, the conversation seems to be around retail or conferences almost exclusively, but mm -hmm. it turns out beacons have uh, a vast number of applications uh, centered around the one idea. Beacons are about context, okay. right? It's the idea that you could make the user experience better by right. making it more efficient and yet have the same value by being able to short circuit the context. Traditionally, users have to tell you where they're at or what they're doing to be able to get the information they need. Okay. But with beacons, you can get that information from the environment and then just take the user directly to their value. Now, you, you've explained a little bit in some of your videos about like a bus stop scenario, about like a bus stop scenario. A little bit more about that? Yeah, you can imagine uh, the user gets to their bus stop. Now, a bus app uh, today might mean that they have to load up the app and say, okay, I'm at this bus stop. Mm -hmm. Even if it has location, it's like, is it the one across the street? Or this it has to be one, really sensitive location too, right? right? Yeah. And uh, and they have probably only a few routes that they travel per day, but the app doesn't know that unless they like actually tell it these mm -hmm. are the routes that I care about. Well, with beacons, the app could sense which bus stop they're at. Okay. Right, the signal attenuation will give them very fine um, information on lo the location. Right. But then the buses they get on can also have beacons. Right, beacons don't mm. have to stay in place, okay. and that adds additional context. So now, mm. when they get to their bus stop, there's a notification waiting for them, telling them that that route is late, but they can take the express. Ah, cool. Or maybe the express is running late, so it's better to take the local. Who knows? Yeah. So okay, cool. So now, when it comes to like developing for beacons, it's there must be so much diversity, and like, how, how do we make sure that there's a great user experience across them all? There's a few things to pay attention to. 
First off is the Beacon format. Now this is uh, what we release is called Eddy Stone. This is an open, flexible format that's extensible, mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's really important for manufacturers to know about it so that they can build in that compatibility uh, in their beacons, which they've already done. Right? There's a lot of uh, hardware beacons out there today that have Eddy Stone built in, and it's important for app developers to know about so that when they acquire beacons and deploy them, that okay. they can make sure that they're compatible with Eddy Stone. Uh, then there's the Proximity Beacon API, and this is where uh, developers can uh, register their beacons and associate data. This right. beacon means this thing. Nice. And you can even attach JSON, right? Like it's it's pretty flexible, the data that you can associate with that beacon. And then finally, there's the nearby API. Mm -hmm. And this is what you use in your app to be able to cite and get data for those beacons. Okay. And it's a subscription thing. The, the developer can just say, hey, I'm interested in these kinds of beacons. And then when one of those beacons is nearby, nearby will inform the app giving them the data that's associated with it. Right. Now, so there's a lot for a developer to learn here now. Mm -hmm. I believe you've recently launched a course for yes. developers to learn about uh, ubiquitous computing. For all, all about that, ubiquitous so. computing. So, no, so this all is about on, ubiquitous. I like that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> this is on Udacity. Okay. And uh, it teaches developers uh, some information about ubiquitous computing in general, right? right? The big ideas that we've been talking about, but also uh, design paradigms and okay. technical specifics cool. on Android Wear. Google Cast, Android TV, and Android Auto. Cool. cool. So it's a great place if you're already an Android developer and you understand, you know, building for the phone and you mm -hmm. want to get into building for some of these other platforms as well. It's a great yep. place to start. And like developers can just go and access the materials, all the videos, all that kind of thing for free. That's right. Right. So it's like it's not like it's going to be an expensive thing. If you got time, go learn. And this is a great new frontier for developers, right? Yeah. And Udacity is a, a great place for anybody around the globe to to start engaging with this material. But also, we're having an event this fall in San yes, Francisco. Yes, I heard about this. Tell yes. us about it. So uh, we really want to have a conversation with developers and with our friends across industry and across companies about ubiquitous computing, about wearables, living room, auto, about Internet of Things, right? Because a big component of this is making that service available anywhere that it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So we really want to talk about interoperability. We want to talk about platforms and standards. And uh, so we're gathering that conversation together here in San Francisco. Cool. I look forward to it. So thank you, Timothy. This has been great. Thank you. <laughs> you know, so thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of Coffee with a Googler. And I hope you learned a little bit, or I hope you learned a lot about ubiquitous computing. And Timothy, it's been fabulous having you as a guest. Take a look in the link underneath. We'll have a link to the conference, so to the summit that Timothy had actually mentioned, so that you can register for that. And we'll also put a link down there to the Udacity course, so you can go, you can sign on, and you can take a look at learning how to do ubiquitous computing and develop for the ubiquitous computing platform for yourself. If you have any questions for me, or if you have any questions for Timothy, please leave them in the comments below. And if you want to watch any more of the great videos that we have on the Google Developers channel, please go ahead and subscribe.